My name is Asla Manish and I am a professor of health economics at the University of British Columbia and I'm involved in teaching health economics and I also direct the Masters in Health Administration program. My name is Daphne Gu. I am a statistician. I've been working with Aslan for the last 15 years. Uh, I'm Eric Fu. I'm also a statistician here with CHAOS. Now, you'd wonder what is CHAOS? Well, CHAOS is the Center for Health Evaluation and Outcome Sciences. And as the director of CHAOS, I'm involved in several studies that evaluate the cost effectiveness and efficiency of healthcare interventions. Uh, and really, we are focused on a rigorous evaluation, interpretation, and dissemination of health outcomes information. The center is situated in a teaching and research hospital, which makes it the ideal setting for it to be able to support clinician scientists and clinical epidemiologists use health information and in the process inform the decisions they make beyond their clinical knowledge but based also on knowledge of the wider outcomes that, that occur within a healthcare setting. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about health informatics, what it is, and why it is critically important to the types of work that chaos does. And now I'm not a health informatics expert, I am an economist, but I can give you the lay definition of what health informatics is all about. In some ways it's about information science, computer science, and knowledge about the healthcare system coming together. And it comes together when you bring with it clinical guidelines as well as medical terminologies and diagnostic criteria. For example, there's international classification of diagnostic criteria. When those are embedded in computer systems and they are able to capture data according to ICD codes, then it becomes a very important electronic health record. It is the type of information that we need to do our research and it requires a fairly developed information and communication system to capture this data. There's lots of very valuable health information that lies untapped in health administrative databases. For example, I live in the province of British Columbia and probably like where you live, we have a system that keeps tracks of payments made to doctors by the health insurance system. We also have a database which captures prescriptions that are dispensed in pharmacies and we have hospital admissions databases. These databases contain vital information that can be used to look at the health of our population. And if we don't access this information, we are potentially acting irresponsibly. That's why uh, public health informatics is very important to make sure that all data that is being captured by the healthcare system is mined and use to safeguard the population as well as to ensure that we have the best possible health outcomes. The example I'm going to use today is an example for rheumatoid arthritis, which is a debilitating disease which has no cure and it's a chronic disease that people live with for the rest of their lives. Until recently, there were very few drugs available for its treatment. The only drugs that were available were called DMARTs. DMARTs stands for Disease Modifying Anti-Rheumatic Drugs. People with rheumatoid arthritis had limited treatment options and these treatments were quite toxic. About 10 years ago, a new type of drug became available known as biologics. These biologics actually revolutionized the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis beyond what was available from DMARDs, however, they are very, very expensive. When they asked us as health economists to advise them on what the potential cost would be to introduce biologics in British Columbia, we realized we really didn't know how much we were spending on the old DMARDs and how well we were managing patients in RA. 
And because of this, we undertook a project where we went to our administrative databases and looked at who in that database had rheumatoid arthritis, what they were getting, how much they were getting, and whether they were going to need a biologic or not. The trick was to access information from electronic health records that were embedded in the administrative databases and extract the information to make policy decisions. There are health administrative databases where the data were collected for administrative purposes by the Ministry of Health. This data contain patient information including patient demographics, physician visits, hospital encounters, and medication dispensation. They can all be linked with unique patient identifiers. Once various databases are linked, these can be further supplemented with external information, such as clinical guidelines, which can help us answer our research questions. We linked all the records together, then applied case definitions and treatment guidelines to form a population-based rheumatoid arthritis cohort. Some examples of simple health outcomes are length of stay, readmission, and complications. Beyond these simple outcomes are, for example, cost of hospitalization, cost of drug, and cost of certain procedures. And for example, to cost hospital duration, we develop hospital cost models, which is based on activity-based costing. And that requires the availability of information and information technology, such as patient tracking system and medication monitoring. And in this particular study, our objective was to ensure that we knew that people with rheumatoid arthritis were actually getting the proper quality of care that they should have been getting as consistent with the guidelines, i.e. that the diagnosis had been confirmed, and that they were being treated with DMARDs early and aggressively by rheumatologists. So basically in this project, uh, I'm linking five databases together. I'm going to give you um, the details about each database. The central file is the patient demographics, the patient registration, and I'm linking visits to physicians, every prescription records, in BC pharmacies and hospital encounters and also death records from BC vital statistics together. What we found that was most shocking to us was that only 43 percent of the entire RA cohort were receiving treatment with DMARDs and if you go back to the guideline that I mentioned a second ago it said that every patient should be on DMARDs. So this slide summarizes some of the results. general idea I want to convey to you is that uh, we had all this information available to us in administrative databases and because we were concerned about how to deal with the potential cost implications of the introduction of a new class of drug for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, we undertook this investigation and, and then we found all this information and this basically gives you an idea of how powerful health informatics can be in tackling a lot of the healthcare problems we face today. As I said, we wanted to look at what the cost implications will be of introducing this new class of drugs called biologics, which were the latest drugs available after the DMARDs. So, a continuation to the uh, care gap study would be to look at, say, if uh, the cost of biologic would be offset by the reduction in the cost of hospitalization, physician visits, especially like joint replacement, uh, knee replacement, hip joint replacement. And as, as Eric said, we are now looking at the cost implications of introducing biologics, which are way more expensive than the older DMARDs, but also have a much better toxicity profile. This study is also based on linked health administrative data 
and this slide shows you the long-run trend in treatment costs for patients with rheumatoid arthritis in the province of British Columbia, and these costs are broken down by treatment with the newer agent biologics, uh, other older drugs, physician visits, and hospitalization. But the reason we wanted to bring this study as part of our discussion today was to show you that not only is health information that is available from electronic health records a great resource to look at the care of patients with different diagnoses, their follow-up by physicians, and whether this care and follow-up is consistent with treatment guidelines or not. It's also a very valuable source of information for the healthcare planner because in this second study, we are going to be able to inform the health administration planner on the cost implications of these new drugs and what the savings are, what the trade-offs are. So I'd like to conclude by saying that uh, health informatics has completely revolutionized the way we do health services research today. And instead of having to design expensive experimental studies where we have to follow patients in the future uh, for a long time to, to get answers, we can often look backwards retrospectively at utilizing health information data to answer these questions. Thank you very much.